Well, welcome back to another episode of Lounging with Ludlam. My name is Ryan McCorkle, and I'm here in sales at in the manufacturer here in Sweetwater, Texas. I'm joined today by Sean Guggen. He is our business development and certified health physicist at, at Protean Instruments in Knoxville, Tennessee. So, Sean, thanks for joining us today. Sean's going to be presenting this uh, webinar to you guys over the contamination and clearance monitors that uh, the Ludlam Measurements has. In, in store now. So, Sean, thanks for joining us. I'm going to turn it right over to you. Take it away. Great. Thank you very much, Ryan. Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about a, a new member of the uh, Bloodlum family, and uh, we'll go through the presentation, have some time for questions. Uh, we'll break uh, a couple times throughout the presentation, and first go around, I'll show you how to put the presentation uh, in the look at the questions mode to get you started. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's uh, let's get rolling. So advance here the first uh, first slide for you. Uh, you may have noticed when you enter our web page now, you get a pop up uh, with uh, Ludlam Measurements new division, uh, Ludlam GmbH out of Germany, and we're uh, we're very pleased to welcome them to the to the Ludlam family with a line of uh, contamination and uh, clearance monitors. Quickly, just want to go over all our divisions uh, and our capabilities uh, just shortly, and then we'll get back into our focus of uh, Ludlam GmbH. So Ludlam Measurements is made up with uh, a number of different divisions. Uh, Elgin Technology, uh, manufacturer of organic scintillators, zinc sulfide, optical cements. If you've got a scintillator in one of your prod products, it's very likely the scintillators and technology comes from Elgin. Uh, we also have uh, Adit, uh, electron tubes in Texas, and uh, ET uh, Enterprises in the UK, and they're manufacturers of photomultiplier tubes, magnetic shields, uh, high voltage power supplies and sockets and bases, and not surprisingly, these products go into the uh, Ludlam Measurements uh, scintillation uh, array. Uh, uh, Plowden and Thompson, a over 200 year old specialty glass company, um, hand pressed glass, mouth blown glass, preci precision tuning, and they make, not surprisingly, a lot of the glass for uh, Adit and uh, ET electron tubes for their uh, Ludlam Systems UK. Here is a, another recent addition. Uh, they are representative sales and service in the UK for our uh, Ludlam GmbH products. Uh, we also have uh, Ludlam Wind, uh, designs and manufactures electronic components, including uh, insulated gate bipolar transistors. Say that three times fast. Uh, they're used to primarily to uh, for switching and power in the wind industry, and also the IGBT uh, circuitry is uh, used in such technologies as rail guns and even IGBT-based motors drives in submarines to reduce noise signatures. Uh, Protean Instrument in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, manufacturer of uh, high precision and high performance alpha beta counters. Uh, 2B Technologies in Colorado, uh, specializing in the manufacture of portable instruments for air and water monitoring, such as PM 2.5, uh, black carbon photometers, uh, nitrous oxide, nitrous NO2, and ozone measurements for, uh, for disinfection. And then uh, last but certainly not least is West Texas Molding, a uh, plastic injection manufacturer that makes many of the uh, blown plastic bases uh, that are used in uh, Ludlum products. Ludlum GmbH or Hamburg is our most recent addition. Uh, they've been in Hamburg since 2017. Uh, here's the, the family here, product portfolio established with a number of customers in Central Europe. And this is where our new product line of contamination and clearance monitor. Uh, combined over 250 years of energy uh, engineering experience in the nuclear sector. So we're, we're glad to, to welcome them on board. Um, we have Ludlam GmbH, 
uh, which we are talking about today, formerly James Fisher Nuclear Group in Hamburg. They became part of the LMI family in October 2020, and they augment our existing LMI product line with uh, whole body service and contamination monitors, hand foot monitors, a range of small object monitors, which we'll go over, uh, laundry monitors, and then very large clearance monitors. And the nice thing, uh, what they brought along with them is a new technology uh, which allows us for configuration of energy windows, 256 channels per second per detector. Uh, these are temperature controlled for stability and they offer solid state uh, detection. So this is primarily a SIPM technology that we'll be talking about in that product line for the uh, plastic scintillators. The existing products of uh, Ludlam Measurements uh, Inc. in the field, so we already have a, a significant line of contamination monitors, uh, model 53 gamma portal, which you may be familiar with, uh, model 52 uh, series of smaller portal monitors, the monitor uh, 54 and 54A uh, article monitors, and uh, model 4906 hand foot monitors, uh, a, B, and uh, also the uh, air proportional counters, um, model 3277 and 3276, uh, single uh, double, double step uh, hand foot monitors, the model 410P, 49, 4901P with uh, not scintillation detectors, but with uh, pancake GM probes, and then the model 215 hand monitor. So these are all existing technologies uh, manufactured out of uh, Sweetwater, Texas that we have in our portfolio. What Ludlam GmbH brings to us is a new USB technology, uh, cutting edge detector electronics contained in every detector, uh, microprocessor driven USB connection, plug and play that all these detectors plug into a USB hub and uh, that provides us the uh, ADD conversion for this pioneering engineering discrimination using the channels from the SIPM detectors. Uh, powered over USB, integrated high voltage detector uh, generation in each detector. And with this technology, we're allowed uh, integrated data filters, which allows us to do things like alpha discrimination and some uh, spectrometry uh, with that. And we provide also uh, a toolkit. Uh, here it involves a computer to plug in USB to do detector diagnosis and tuning on site before you put the detectors into the instrument. Uh, the newest detection technology in this series is uh, beta plastic detectors for beta and alpha radiation uh, with a semiconductor readout. Uh, and using SIPMs as compared to a photomultiplier tube. And uh, with that, we also get to see uh, the spectrum of the uh, alpha beta uh, detectors, which allows us to look at uh, what the individual radionuclides and uh, be able to set specific windows uh, for that analysis. So uh, very exciting with the semiconductor uh, readouts. Uh, with this energy discrimination and scintillation, uh, each beta and or alpha and gamma detectors is equipped with a fast analog to digital converter that allows us to look at nice uh, spectrums depending on the energy of the incoming radiation uh, to be able to then do some nice windowing discrimination and also uh, do some background reduction. So gives us some reduction in detection limits and of course time. A reduction in measurement times for individual radionuclides, special filtration for a norm reduction in our uh, analysis, and also some fingerprint validation. So we can see what the expected fingerprint would be from the measurement, and then see if things are different than what we are expecting. Uh, we allow do this with some predefined slot groups, uh, non-adjustable slots installed by manufacturer. Uh, group two, some freely configurable slots that allow some customization. And then groups uh, three, some automatically configured slots that we can set up 
for the instruments as, uh, as they're delivered to you. Uh, one of the key things in uh, any of this technology is uh, tests and standards. Um, undergo significant testing. Uh, TUV Nord is a, a European group that's an NRTL or a laboratory that does some testing for us. And uh, we're looking at compliance with ISO 61098, which is probably a, primarily a contamination monitor uh, in detector designs. Uh, ISO 11929, this is detect termination of characteristic limits, uh, decision limits, detection thresholds, and generically could refer to this as Bayesian statistics. Uh, German uh, KTA 1505, uh, verification of measurement equipment for radiation monitoring, uh, struck L schedule five, in addition, uh, radiation protection uh, requirements for, uh, for, for Germany and Europe. And so all of these designs get, uh, get tested. We get uh, TUV uh, ISO 9001 qualifications uh, with this manufacturer, just like uh, Ludlam Measurements is an ISO 9001 manufacturer. Uh, CE NRTL, including uh, United uh, Underwriters Laboratory and uh, CSA for Canadian. And generally, this will meet or exceed the uh, relative industry uh, industry guidance uh, and standards. Uh, so let's launch right in here to the uh, Ludlam uh, whole body monitors, the GMBH. We have two primarily primary whole body monitors, a uh, HPB or HBG uh, 29. Uh, 29 or 31 detectors if we wind up having two detectors on the foot in both an open and enclosed format. Uh, we also have some gamma detection op options for this, uh, one or two foot detector design, and the ability to employ gasless and gas flow design. So this is a, a flexible platform where we can put multiple detectors in there. Uh, we can do a, a beta only, a beta gamma, uh, a alpha beta with uh, zinc sulfide scintillation in the units, and uh, a nice body contour design. Uh, and in the closed mode here, we uh, can implement uh, control or flow control using windows uh, and, and or doors to let people in and out of the monitors with uh, additional interfaces for turnstiles and gates as well. Uh, we also have the ability to uh, implement on the head detector either an automated or manual uh, head detector to get top and uh, top sides of the head. Uh, these units both have radon progeny reduction uh, and, I, and only in the uh, alpha beta capable units. So we need the uh, zinc sulfide uh, instrument there. And then we have a, a smaller or economy model the uh, HBP or HBG 22 with 22 detectors. And uh, this is an open design, uh, 22 detectors, radon progeny capable. And often this is applied as a pre-monitor uh, somewhere within the zone. So for the details on the HBP 29, 29 detectors, option for additional foot detectors. We can see here with the single foot detector, kind of the top of shoe and leg detector uh, with the op optional moving head detector as well. A uh, very innovative, de intuitive design, uh, easily reachable display to uh, do some uh, testing and calibration. And the nice thing here is all of these systems are web browser accessible uh, with the same interface. So we have maintained the consistency of the interface of course all these products in this line. And uh, even more important here is a multiple language support. So we can support and uh, implement languages that are appropriate for your location. And as I said before, the HBP22 uh, designed more of a pre-monitor or a economy model as compared to the HBP-29 uh, system. 
And here's uh, another picture of the uh, facing of the uh, HBP22 uh, instrument. So the 22, uh, a economy uh, pre-monitor, the 29, uh, more full body contoured coverage. Taking a little bit closer look with the uh, HBP29 personal uh, contamination monitor, uh, we can see the uh, various standards uh, that we're in compliance with. Uh, the housing presently is stainless steel. Uh, we're in the process of looking at also a carbon steel design uh, with uh, maintaining the stainless steel on the foot or base plate for uh, ease of uh, de decontamination. Uh, user size between 1.5 meters and 2.1 meters in height. And the ability for both the 29 and the 22 is uh, we can implement different technologies. We have a beta gamma plastics hybrid, which would be good for a nuclear medicine, uh, radio pharmaceutical type production. Uh, the HAP484, uh, which is an alpha beta plastics with uh, discrimination. And then we have the straight beta uh, instrument, the HBP484. And that 484 stands for the uh, centimeter squared size of the detector. And then we have the HPC484 uh, gas proportional counter with a uh, gas flow management system to uh, reduce, uh, reduce gas flow. We also have the option for gamma detectors uh, behind the main whole body detectors as well as a, a gamma foot as well. Uh, 12 inch uh, touch screen and voice output. So we have a uh, nice guided uh, of the guidance of the individuals through the monitor itself. And here's what the layout looks like from the front with uh, in this case, uh, the additional two uh, foot detectors uh, on the right-hand side, which uh, brings the total to 29, uh, or 31, excuse me, uh, the head detector and uh, the hand pod on the side. The HBP22 uh, is uh, same compliance uh, with the standards, uh, same user size and, uh, and different uh, same or same similar detectors uh, that are available. Uh, a PLC driven IO with monitor status so we can look at this uh, remotely via a web browser. Uh, and uh, in this case, we're using a Linux uh, web interface. So uh, a lot of uh, movement uh, away from a Windows platform into, uh, into other operating systems and Linux in this case being a, a very stable operating system. And then just a uh, little bit different view of the HBP22 system. So those are the two uh, whole body counters that we have, the surface contamination monitor uh, in, the, in the product line. Let's take a quick uh, break for some questions here. And in order to ask a question uh, in the interface that you have, you will be able to see a, a hand over here on the right. And if you click that, that will cause you to raise your hand for a question. Uh, and then down below that, there's a small little box with a, a question. And uh, if you click on that box, this opens up the questions pod and you can submit uh, questions uh, for us to, uh, to answer. So let's take a, take a couple of questions uh, if anybody has them now, and then we'll move along on to our hand foot monitor uh, and, uh, and other products. So any questions uh, at this point? Uh, radon rejection, uh, yes, indeed. Um, we do implement uh, radon progeny rejection uh, for the uh, whole body contamination monitors in the uh, alpha beta uh, capable H8 P uh, detectors. So combination of zinc sulfide and plastic using the zinc sulfide on the front of the detector 
uh, to be able to give us the alpha, and then we implement a, a ratios method to identify radon progeny. Good. Um, excellent. So uh, there is, uh, there's our whole body surface contamination monitor product line. And let's now talk a little bit about our hand foot monitors. Uh, we start off with the uh, HFC. This is a portable uh, hand foot monitor with a, a rechargeable battery that you can move uh, to directly to some work evolutions. Uh, portable about 11 and uh, 6 kilograms respectively for the two uh, different elements of the instrument. Uh, an integrated touchscreen display. So this is the hand monitor uh, to be able to uh, look at uh, look at the and set up and the results. Uh, excellent for deployment in some remote locations. And the nice thing about this, it's portable. Uh, these two are connected uh, with a cable. So it's not a Bluetooth or wireless connection between the hand monitor and the foot module. And this is a uh, two-step uh, monitor process, which you can put in uh, automatic mode. So it's expecting to monitor both uh, right hand, right foot, left hand, left foot. And we can store all this data uh, and export it uh, in an XML format. So uh, this employs the uh, beta plastic scintillator. So a nice portable instrument that you can move around. The other hand foot monitor we have is the uh, HFC-8. Uh, this has eight gasless scintillation detectors, uh, solid state readout. So any of our plastic uh, alpha beta, uh, beta or beta gamma hybrid detectors are all that SIPM technology. Um, so this, we have the beta, the alpha beta or the beta gamma hybrid. So this would be ideal for a nuclear medicine type or PET uh, type of installation uh, with the beta gamma hybrid detector. Uh, this is optimized design for both gasless and gas detectors so we can plug in uh, gas flow detectors into these systems as well. We implement uh, alpha discrimination in the gasless configured by a zinc sulfide layer. Uh, again, with all these systems, web browser for remote access, a uh, nice touch screen for interface. And this removable uh, hand uh, detector over here on the right-hand side can be pulled out and used as a frisker. And this is a one-step hand foot monitor. And we have uh, spring-loaded hand detectors on here to provide really good contact uh, with the individual's hand uh, on the instrument. So here's what the, the upper screen looks like. Uh, again, a stainless steel housing uh, with all the uh, different detectors. Uh, these are uh, 300 centimeter square detectors in this uh, particular unit. Uh, same operating system and uh, sensors for the positioning of the individual. Uh, we also have options such as a card reader uh, and lights and uh, different interfaces that are available for the hand foot. So any, uh, any questions on that? Um, let's take a look and see what we have for, uh, for questions. With the use of SIPMs in conjunction with the plastic scintillators, appears you can do some rough uh, spectroscopy within the contamination monitors. Can this information be used to better detect uh, radon rejection. Yeah, that, that is a possibility. Uh, currently, the, the radon progeny rejection is done via the ratios, and we can look at uh, that particular spectrum as compared to what we would see for uh, alpha versus beta. So uh, yes, indeed, that is, a, that is a, an option for us. Any other questions on uh, hand foot monitors? All right, well, we'll move along to uh, the article and uh, release and clearance monitors. We have uh, quite a, an array of different sizes of uh, article monitors here. 
And uh, this, while we use some similar technology, these are primarily uh, photomultiplier tube-based instruments. Uh, we have the HWM, Hazardous Waste Monitor 21 liter. Uh, all the names uh, and model numbers here are focused on the size of the chamber uh, here. So uh, this is, you can, uh, you can tell what, uh, what the size of the chamber is. The uh, 21, the 38, the 65, uh, the 100, the 180, a 400, and a 400S, and we'll take a look at that configuration in a minute, as well as the 1800 liter, a uh, very large clearance monitor, uh, which can be integrated with a number of, uh, of different um, conveyors and uh, automation systems. Um, we don't have a weight scale in the uh, 21, uh, but we do in all the other instruments have uh, have weight scales, so we can do some attenuation based on mass uh, for these particular instruments. And again, these typically would be used to clear uh, cobalt and or cesium or photon emitters uh, out of a nuclear power facility or other uh, decommissioning type facility. Uh, the size of these uh, and the footprints are provided on uh, this slide. And uh, you can think of the HWM21 as a kind of a microwave oven. Notebooks, personal items, a hard hat just fits in there, a computer, so a, a more rapid, a rapid scan of uh, those kind of personal items. If we look at the HWM38, uh, think of a bigger microwave oven, uh, similar items and hard hat. And as we move up in size, the HWM65, like a small kitchen oven, as long as well as the HWM100. Uh, and we move our way up to uh, HWM180, uh, large kitchen ovens, soft trash bags, components, and tools. And then the 400 and the 400S and the 1800, uh, these have some more uh, automation that's involved and some more analysis. Uh, with these instruments as well. And if we look at those, uh, these are typically free release chambers used in uh, d d type of operations. Here's the 400 uh, free release chamber and the 400S uh, with uh, no display on the top, but we have an integrated external computer system and we can then uh, integrate some conveyors and some uh, automated doors uh, with the system controlled off of this control panel. Uh, the HWM 1800 is a, a large free release, free release chamber, uh, which is uh, much more highly uh, configurable uh, with options and uh, with sliding doors to be able to uh, slide the, the instrument and things uh, or what you're counting in and out. And think of uh, 55 gallon drums and uh, very large components. Uh, here we are with uh, the system with a, an additional computer on the side uh, with uh, swinging doors as compared to sliding doors. And uh, we have the ability using these calibration fixtures to do some nice uh, vector analysis of the various radionuclides and uh, custom calibrations depending on the position uh, of the materials in the in the chamber. We have also supplied this with a integration with a climate controlled office. So we can have the equipment working down here and then up above or on the side, have a uh, climate controlled office to be able to perform operations in uh, outside environments. Typically, all of the article and free release monitors have a two-door interlock system, uh, internal UPSs, as well as the, the whole body and hand foots. Uh, we have the ability to have an internal uninterruptible power supply. Uh, energy filter systems for uh, norm and background reduction, uh, remote monitoring via the web interface, uh, and uh, implementation of weight scales uh, depending on the instrument, obviously the HWM21 does not have a weight scale. 
and we can look at a, a number of different lead options, typically a one or two inch lead options, uh, two and three inch uh, lead options for the HWM 1800. And then for the HWM uh, 21, we have a 0.6 and 1.2 inch uh, thickness lead options as well. Some of these lead options are also available on a couple of the other systems to reduce weight. And for example, if you were using lower energy uh, nuclear medicine, uh, technetium 99 things, uh, that would be a, a good option for a uh, thinner lead in the system. Uh, optional cameras all the way up to uh, CCT video observation for any of the automated monitors like the 400S and the 1800WM uh, monitor, uh, conveyor integration, and uh, radionuclide tracker modules for uh, multi-channel al analysis operations with this vector analysis. So if you're looking at specific radionuclides, uh, which is typically done in Europe with this vector analysis, uh, can also be done in the US uh, for the individual efficiencies of the individual radionuclides based upon a, uh, a known uh, waste profile. So that can also be done. And of course, the ISO 11929 uh, Bayesian analysis. So uh, any questions on the clearance monitors at all? So Sean, it looks like we have a few more questions that, you know, going back a, a few steps that, that you might want to want to jump in on. What are the dead zones on the the detectors on the, the 29, 22 and 29? Uh, we have no dead zones whatsoever. Uh, no, uh, there there are some uh, some zones that are minimized uh, between the detectors. Uh, the overall uniformity of the detectors is uh, is excellent um, with the uh, with the SIPMs on the uh, on the outside distribution of the uh, scintillators, uh, but very very small dead zones, uh, probably about uh, maybe a little bit less than a quarter, three eighths of an inch. Um, there uh, between the detectors, uh, and we'll have a a nice um, type test document which will give you uh, all those uh, all those individual specifications. Okay, and then another another question here: What is the typical counting time for each side of the twenty nine monitor under moderate background? Uh, so, with with regard to the count times, these count times are very uh, similar to uh, what the uh, competitors count times are uh, and for example uh, we're looking at uh, MDAs or things less much less than 5,000 uh, dpm with uh, less than 10 seconds of uh, count time per side uh, with about a 10 micro hour per hour background with with a hundred second background so if we wind up uh, having a longer average period time uh, there, we can we can significantly reduce that with regard to the count time. So uh, these uh, systems are all uh, play right in uh, with the with the competition as far as uh, minimum detectables, and we can uh, get more specific depending upon the radionuclides that you have. When uh, if you contact us, we can we can give you approximate count times for given uh, exposure conditions. And and how easy is this thing to decontaminate? Oh, very easy to decontaminate. Obviously, the uh, stainless steel is easy to decontaminate. Um, so uh, that and the uh, mesh windows and detector windows are also uh, replaceable. Uh, so you can, uh, if those get contaminated, you can pull those out and uh, and decon them as well. So uh, very simple to uh, to decon. And then compared. on that on the H HFC eight, um, is it six or eight detectors, and and where are the other two? So um, each hand pod has two detectors, so that's four uh, for the hand detectors. So uh, palm and a back of hand and then we have additional two detectors to cover the foot area on each side so four on the 
on the feet and uh, four detectors in the hand pots. Okay, and uh, contact efficiencies of your monitors? Um, we, can, uh, we can provide those. Uh, again, they're typical uh, with uh, most of the uh, other industry standards. Uh, we typically want to uh, give you what the, uh, the MDAs are uh, with the instrument versus efficiency, uh, because obviously you've got two factors in there that are determine what, uh, what those count times are. And uh, it's both background and the individual efficiencies. So very, very similar uh, and or better than, uh, than the competitions. And if you want some further details, we can provide those uh, typically with a quotation. Uh, we provide you all the MDAs for a given, given background of count time. Okay, yeah, we move on to the laundry monitor. All right, so uh, the laundry monitor are uh, HLM6 uh, beta plastic detectors, uh, also optional gas and uh, gamma and gas flow detectors can be added to this. Uh, nice, uh, nice system, a two meter by one meter measurement belt, one meter wide by, by two meters long, uh, any number of options for uh, the output or input with a, a tray or uh, other conveyor systems, uh, uninterruptible power supply, again, a nice touch screen interface, uh, stainless steel lining, uh, and conveyor, uh, automatic start stop, and variable conveyor speeds, depending upon what you want to achieve for your minimum detectable activity. So obviously the amount of scan time over a given area significantly affects uh, your MDAs. Uh, so you can get, do a variable conveyor speed and achieve the MDAs that you want. Uh, and one thing that's also very important here is uh, the ability to move this top detector closer uh, to the items that are monitored. So depending on the size of the item, uh, optional automatic uh, upper detector height adjustment uh, that uh, can be implemented as well. And uh, typically here, uh, things like boots, clothes, uh, respirators, uh, booties uh, can be done here in automated fashion. And depending on what you had, uh, various uh, stock uh, bars, flat uh, equipment, uh, you can also run through things other than these uh, personnel type items uh, through the instrument as well. And again, the same standards, um, the HPP beta plastics is the primary uh, ability to have here, but we can put uh, obviously a number of different detectors in here. Uh, and also a gamma option above and below the, the tunnel area. And here you can see the uh, adjustable uh, top detector uh, here with the nice, uh, nice stainless steel uh, measurement conveyor. So that's the automated system. So we've talked about our whole body monitors, our article monitors, our hand foot, and uh, as well as uh, conveyor monitors. And we tie all this together with a, a software uh, which is optimized for use and handling. A nice touch screen. Uh, obviously you can use this through a web interface as well uh, to both uh, do the individual maintenance of the detectors as well as uh, doing the operations and monitoring it. So all touch screens. Uh, a measuring and maintenance mode uh, for the instrument, uh, automatic initialization and background reduction, uh, automatic measuring modes. And the key thing here with any type of contamination monitor system is the automatic self-checking and monitoring diagnostics that have to be done. Uh, so it's a really important to reduce uh, the downtime and determine whether or not the instrument can meet your detection limits. And we do this by the self-checking, monitoring and diagnostics of the detection, detection function with background loss of counts uh, and uh, monitoring the individual performance of each detector. Uh, also, we're password protected. 
uh, in the maintenance mode. We have a central web vis visualization interface, say that three times fast, and uh, a software interface for local languages. So we have German here, uh, English, and uh, then of course, if we see the, uh, the British flag, uh, that's the other kind of English that we have, uh, with no, no insult uh, meant to uh, any of our, our UK, UK customers. Uh, so modern web-based interface, uh, operation system independent, uh, clean and easy to use software design, touch panels, and uh, ISO 11929 error propagation and analysis. So uh, we are compliant with that standard and we can apply a number of different calibration uh, jigs and setups to be able to look at where the radionuclides are distributed within that chamber body. Uh, interface, uh, is, uh, as we said before, is uh, intuitive, touchscreen uh, with uh, multi-language support. For the whole body counter, we can see uh, that we have the ability to easily interpret the results in terms of the position uh, of the individual in the instrument with the individual detectors showing up as uh, contaminated or not contaminated and here's the uh, the other english version of the software uh, and also the ability within the uh, setup mode maintenance mode to be able to adjust our individual parameters for our measurement uncertainty levels uh, our measurement times minimum and maximum measurement times and in this case uh, minimum you would set a, a minimum time that the instrument would monitor. And th this helps you with situations where you have a monitor that's a little bit, maybe a second longer than another monitor. So you can set all those monitors the same because you'd be surprised how many people will wait an additional two or three minutes for a monitor that's only a second longer than the other one. So this helps you manage your crowd control or distribution across the monitors for people looking at with human nature oh that monitor is six seconds this monitor is five seconds i'm going to save an extra second but i'm going to wait two minutes two more minutes by one of the other monitors and then of course a maximum measurement time here which allows us to remotely or indirectly monitor detector performance and background so if we have a high background in area uh, the monitoring time is going to go up proportionally, particularly for uh, beta and gamma, where that background uh, contributes to the detector. And so we can do a maximum time that will give us an indication of uh, increased background via measurement time. And then, of course, we can set our units for measurement, uh, our radon lower and upper thresholds, and uh, background parameters and time and measurement time. And then of course, the ability to select uh, different calibration factors uh, for that particular instrument. And then within the software interface, we have any number of diagnostics that we can perform uh, looking at the individual detector performance and state uh, to identify, quickly identify faults and diagnostics. Uh, for the instrument performance. And uh, this is again is a, a key feature is available remotely uh, with since these are all uh, web-based uh, interface. So a uh, very, very nice uh, detector status and uh, calibration routines are all automated. Any questions on the software? While we see if any, any questions come through, we uh, a lot of you might have seen when you when you signed up for this webinar, we we are going to give away a fifty dollar uh, card today to uh, to one of our lucky lucky winners here. So I've got a, I've got a hat full of your names, the ones that are registered today and are here joining us in the webinar. So, so while we're waiting on a few questions to come through, I want to go ahead and pick the, the winner of of the fifty dollar card. And just here is uh, looking at the uh, references that we have, uh, primarily in uh, in Europe, uh, 
uh, since uh, August 2020. We're going to update this, but uh, these are all customers of ours. Um, all right, so it looks like the winner today for the $50 card is Jermaine Conate from uh, OSU. So, Jermaine, we're going to get you uh, get you that card sent over to you, and uh, we want to thank you very much for for joining us today. We did have a couple of a couple of questions come through uh, on the on the detectors. Are they in direct contact with the human body? Uh, well, if you climb into the big waste monitor, you can certainly lean up against one of the detectors, but I don't think that's really the question. Uh, yeah, for the contamination monitors, uh, the individual can uh, move up uh, very close to the detector. They're actually separated from the detector itself by uh, a few millimeters uh, of the either the mesh or the uh, and or the the frame. So the whole idea when you're doing the personnel contamination monitor is you want to get as close as you can, and all these systems have sensors uh, a cl body close sensor uh, making sure your hands properly in place with the hand pod making sure your foot is present on the uh, foot detector and the same thing with the uh, the hand foot monitors to make sure your foot's in in contact with the detector mesh and your hands are also uh, in the hand pod so yes uh, you're very, very close to these detectors uh, in the both the hand foot and the, uh, the whole body detectors, but not exactly touching the detector. There is some separation between the two. All right, Sean. Well, thank, thank you so much for joining us today and, and for presenting this, this webinar today. And, and if we haven't gotten to your questions today, uh, I prom we will get these to the to representative to uh to answer those for you and if you have any questions you know please send us those to the sales at ludlums.com and we'll we'll be happy to send you some information on these and get some literature in your hands for these instruments so sean right. again thank you for for presenting that today thank you all for joining us for another episode of lounging with ludlum we'll be back with another another webinar soon and we'll have that one posted very soon so thank you all very much and we'll see you next time thank you have a great day, everybody.